everyone, this is Trisha and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make this little scrap of fabric tote bag and give it a sort of a quilted look. So to make our tote bag, we're going to need some fabric and I've got some fabric pieces here. I chose six fabrics. You can choose two, three, four, however many you want. We will be doing two panels for the front and then the back of our tote bag. So you can decide uh, how many fabrics you can use. We are going to do 12 strips of fabric per panel. So if you want to have 12 different fabrics, if you happen to have some scraps that you can cut out pieces from, use that. Okay, so this is what I've chosen. I've, I've chosen to do uh, six uh, different fabrics that I have here and I also have an extra fabric that will be for the lining or rather the inside of my tote bag because I plan to do some lining. Now this is all that you would need just to make a simple tote bag but because I want to give it a little bit of a body I have some felt here. This is a white felt you can use like an interfacing or just some you know an extra piece of fabric that you might have that you can use on the inside. Uh, I don't have enough of the white but I do have some yellow so I'm going to go ahead and use a piece from each one of these uh, or maybe I'll just use the yellow uh, to do uh, a little piece on the inside just to give my bag a little bit of extra um, body to it. Okay, we're going to be needing uh, some scissors or if you want to use your rotary cutter with your cutting mat. Of course, we need something to measure with, whether it's a ruler like that or if you want to use a measuring uh, tape. We're going to be using some pins. I'm also going to be using my iron to uh, iron up my se seams and open them up. I have a little spray bottle here with some water to spray my fabric when needed. Uh, what I don't have here in front of me is the sewing machine and of course I need a thread on my sewing machine and I'm not even going to bother with coordinating uh, the thread with my fabric. You can do that if you want. Maybe choose a neutral color. I just have some white thread ready to go. I'm just going to make a nice little simple little bag. Okay, because I'm using six different pieces of fabric, I want to have at least a 6 by 14 piece. So here I have this long piece. So I'm just going to make sure that it's nice and ironed out uh, before I start cutting it. And I just need the section where I'm going to cut at least 14 inches from. So once my fabric is all ironed out, let's go ahead and get to the next step. All right, so here's my fabric. It is all ironed out. What I want to do is I want to take the straight edge and align it so that I can then measure up to 14 inches and cut it right there. As you can see, this edge here is not very straight, neither is that one, but we're going to uh, square all that off once we have a nice straight edge here and another straight edge over here. So that's the first thing you want to do. So I'm going to measure up from 10 inches up to 24. That is 14 inches right there. Okay. Now, with this piece here, I want to square it off. So I want to get these edges nice and straight. So I'm going to go over to the uh, the 10 inch again, right over here. I know I'm way over camera, so let me move this over just a bit. Let's move this over here like that. Okay. Here we are at 10 inches, and I'm going to align this nice straight edge with the edge of my graph here. And then I want to make sure that this overlaps a little bit beyond the 10 inches and obviously over here as well. And that where the 6 inches is, I'm also going to make sure that it overlaps that, the 6 inch line. So I want to make sure that this is 6 inches wide. Okay, now that I have it nice and straight here and it's nice and straight at the top as well, I'm going to go ahead and cut it at the 10. Or you could start at zero, wherever it is that you start off at. You could mark all this with some uh, fabric chalk or a fabric pencil and then cut it with your scissors. Okay, so now I have it at the 10 and I'm going to cut at the 6 right there. And I'm going to need strips that are 1.5 inch wide by 14 inches long. And like I said, for each panel, we're going to need 24 strips. And because, I'm sorry, we're going to need 12 strips. For the two panels, we're going to need 24. So because I have six color, six um, different fabrics, 24 divided by six would be four. So I'm cutting four strips out of each of these fabrics. 
again, uh, the way that you can figure it out, like I said, you need 24 strips for the entire bag. 12 for each side. Now you could choose to do one side first and then maybe make the other side completely solid if that's what you want to do. Or if you want to do like 24 different pieces of fabric or whatever you happen to have. For the one panel, we need 12 strips of one and a half inch wide by 14. So let's say I have four fabrics only, and I have six here, but let's say I only have four. So 12 divided by four would be three. So then I would want three strips that are one and a half inch by 14 inch. So because I'm using um, uh, six fabrics, I need four strips of each. So I'm going to be cutting this, again, like I said, 10 by, this is 6 inches by 14. So I'm cutting this one in half now so that I can have 3 inches, 2 3 inch strips. Just make sure that it cuts. Sometimes my rotary cutter is just not very sharp. So i got to pass over it one more time. I don't really want to pull on it, so I'm going to use my scissors right here. Okay, so now these two pieces are 3 inches, and I need to cut them in half. And that'll be one and a half inch pieces. Okay, so just mark it at your half. There we go. One and a half inches. Okay. You can just start cutting pieces of whatever fabric you have. Just start cutting them one and a half by 14. And, you know, then you could lay them all out and create a little pattern for one side and then whatever you have left over, do for the other side. Okay, so here's those two strips. And I'm going to cut this one in half. And then I'm going to continue with the rest of the fabric pieces that I have. So all together, like I said, I'll have 24 pieces. And it doesn't matter what fabrics you use as long as you have 24 pieces. Once again, one and a half inch by 14 inch. All right, so here I have my little strips. I have 24 all together. I'm going to repeat this once again. I'm using six different fabrics, so I have four strips of each. So that is 24 all together. You will do whatever combination you want to do, again, as long as you've got 24. But if you only want to do one side with little strips like this, then you only need 12, and then you can do the other side solid. Okay. Enough of that. I'm going to take these. Well, I've already aligned them sort of in a pattern. So I'm going to take two, like so. Let me move these out of the way over like that. I'm going to keep this in this in this order that I have here because I kind of like the way that looks. So I'm going to take this first uh, two, put them together, line them up as best as you can. I'm going to do a little bit of measuring because that gold one looks a little bit longer. And that was the first one that I cut, so it wasn't trimmed perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave it like that because I can always come and just, once I, once it's sewn, I could trim it off. Okay? I could just do that once it's all sewn together. I'm going to go ahead and leave this and wait till I've sewn it. Okay, so we're going to take these two pieces and we're going to pin them together. And then we're going to take the next two and do the same thing. Put the right sides together. There we go. Let's move them so that they're actually meeting up each other. All right. Pin them and then the other two pieces. So I've got three pairs here. And I'm going to do the same thing with these over here. I'm going to pair them all up. This is the right side, just making sure. There we go. Come on, baby. Line up. Okay, we want to make sure they are all lined up, okay? There we go, okay. Now we can pin them. So once we have these also done, just like we did these, we are going to sew on just one side, and we're going to sew one quarter inch, just one quarter inch down, all the way down, on one side, on each one of these. And again, I'm going to make more pairs out of these, and then I'm going to sew them all together, and I'll be back. All right, once you have sewn all your strips together, you've got two of them sewn together, you just iron right where you sewed it, and then you can open them up like so, and you can spray them with a little bit of water if you desire, and then just spray that open, or just iron that open, I should say, like so. 
Now they may not be perfect, they may have gone off a little bit, but that's okay because we still have some really nice little strips. They're going to look really pretty once we put it all together. Okay, so this once we have our pieces together and we decide that which ones are the ones that are going to go next to each other, I want to put this blue up against this one here, so I'm going to put them together and I'm going to pin them. And now I'm going to do with every piece that is like this one and like this, I'm going to pin them together and sorry there's a fly in here then I'm going to go ahead and sew a quarter inch uh, seam as well there and once I have that piece all sewn like like so these two pieces I can iron that part and then I can pop them open again you can spray them with a little bit of water or starch if you want to use some starch some spray starch and just iron them so that this, the seams are nice and flat and everything looks really pretty. All right, so now that you have this uh, piece uh, already ironed, as you can see, you've already got four strips here. And remember, we're going to do 12 of them. So right now we need to complete six because six, two of them were, you know, each six was repeated two times. So the next uh, piece that I have is the one that I just ironed that I just showed you. And I'm going to put this yellow down onto the red, this one here with the flowers. There's two reds here, but I'm going to choose this one. You can follow a pattern if you want, or you don't even have to, as long as maybe you just don't put two that are the same. Let's say you ended up with the same one here and again here. Well, then just turn it over and use the other side that's not the same, okay? And it doesn't matter if you skip one and there's another one that's the same. No worries. I'm trying to keep a little pattern going here. But just so you don't confuse yourself, don't worry. Okay, so now we're going to pin that. And then we're going to sew that one quarter inch right here. So this little piece is getting sewn onto here. So that then we have it all sewn like this. And then again, we're going to iron it to flatten out and kind of seal that seam. And then we're going to pop it open, spray it, and iron that. Okay. So here we have six pieces already put together, and I already have another one here completed. So for my front panel and also for my back panel, I'm going to want 12. So I'm going to take this, and as you can see, the pattern, and then it's repeated. So I'm going to put this one next to here. So put the right sides together. We're going to pin that, and then we're going to sew it. And we're going to bring it back over here. I'm going to do finish up this one also so that I have these uh, same two panels here that I can then put together. So I'm going to finish that, finish this, iron them out, fold them open, iron them again so I have this nice clean seam and I can have 12 strips of fabric twice. Okay, so I have a front panel and a back panel and I shall be back. And here are my front and my back. They're exactly the same, so it doesn't really matter which one is which. These are my panels, uh, but I will keep in mind that because I ended in this purple, I want to attach this to this one. So I'm going to put these two right sides together for now, just so that you know that if you didn't want to line it with the, um, the felt that I showed you on the inside, um, well, between the uh, actual uh, outer fabric and then your lining. If you wanted to put, you didn't want to put the felt in there, you would take these uh, two panels, and I'm just lining up the, the two different ends so that I don't have the same ones, you know, connected together. Anyway, um, but you would just figure it out with whatever pattern or fabrics you decided to follow. So we'll, once we have this, we can go ahead and sew from uh, the top here, go down, and then across the bottom, and then across uh, the top, and create like a little a little bag with this okay but we're going to skip that step right now and what I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and leave these two together like this anyhow and the other thing that I wanted to do also before I before I do sew them together is that I want to you know lay them flat against each other make sure you iron them and I've already ironed mine uh, is that you do want to make sure that the the sizes match if not do whatever little trimming you need to do little bits here and there and get it to so that they're both the same size but here we go isn't that pretty the little pattern I think it looks so lovely okay we're gonna make some handles for our uh, bag and here I have a piece of fabric that I've already cut out 
This is a 22 inch long by four inch width. Now you can make your handles however long you want. I want one for each side of my bag. They're gonna hang downward like that and you pick them up of course to carry your bag. But I decided that 22 inches was fine hanging off, you know, once it's hanging off like that off of my bag. So that's good enough and it's long enough where when I lift it upward like that, I have a nice little, you know, little handle. So that's how you can decide how long you want your handle. Okay, so I need two handles actually, one for each side of the bag. And I decided that I want to use two different fabrics. So I chose this blue one because that's my favorite in the pattern here of fabrics, this blue one. You can choose whatever you like. And I have this other one here. Now you could already buy, you know, straps that are already made and just use that. I'm just gonna line it with this one. And I've already cut this edge. I already made sure this edge was nice and straight. So I can go ahead and align it with that. And then just use that one as my pattern. Or go ahead and just use your grid or, you know, your fabric chalks, pencil, whatever you have to do your markings. And cut it out that way on your uh, cutting board or use your scissors. So here we go. And let's see, did it cut? <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't. Okay, now the other side. Okay, so now I have the two pieces that I need for my handles. Here we are. Now these pieces, you could fold them in half and then just sew along one edge and leave the little ends open so that then you could just, you know, flip them out, you know, use a little stick and push it through and uh, flip them out. You could do that, but I'm going to do it a little different way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of that felt inside of my straps as well to give them some, uh, you know, like a sturdiness to the straps as well. So I'm going to cut a one inch piece for each of my handles out of my felt. So let's do that. Okay, so here I have my felt and I've aligned it to make sure that it's on the straight or the straightest edge that I can possibly put it at. I'm actually gonna fold it in half because it's really long and my uh, little straight edge here is not very long. So I'm going to measure at one inch and my straight edge has one inch here. So I don't have to worry that, you know, the the you know, I don't have to have it flat up against this. I can just put it up against the edge here, measure an inch. Like I said, you could use a chalk or a fabric marking a marker or pencil to mark all your fabrics. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over this a couple of times because it is four layers of felt. And I wanna see if this did cut through. And it did, okay. So here we have our little pieces and now I just need to cut them to length so here we go they're not perfectly straight obviously because you know we're talking about a little bit of a bulk here with our fabric okay so I'm just gonna align it here at the zero and then just trim it at the 22 that's such a little piece I don't even have to um, you know, I don't have to use my straight edge. Okay, so now I'm going to take these two pieces that I cut for my straps with the, uh, this is the pretty side facing down. Let's get this little bit off of here. Facing down, the pretty side facing down. I'm going to take these and you're going to more or less put them in the center right there. A little bit longer than that, but that's okay. Okay, so now we're going to take these and we're going to fold over this part. Like so, well, first of all, what we want to do is actually, what you want to do is fold over about maybe half an inch or so along one side and then iron that down so it doesn't, you know, flip on, you know, it doesn't keep uh, opening up on you. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to iron that, these little edges down about half an inch on just one side. You don't have to do it on the other side. All right, so I'm just folding in the half inch and I've already done that to this one here. Can you see that on the camera where I just fold it about a half an inch and then iron that down? So I'm going to be doing that to this one as well. And 
let's see, sometimes, you know, it's hard to fold it. Sometimes you have to start at the ends to get that done and then just make your way up. But you know, I like to do it the hard way. Okay, so now that that's marked, that'll be easy to fold downwards. So what we wanna do is again, we're gonna put this in what was more or less the center and just make sure this one goes, yep, yeah, it goes over. Okay, so we're gonna put this one over it like that. And then what you could do is you could iron that down. Let me open it a little bit. Let me move, move it down a little more towards this other end. There we go. Fold that over. You're gonna iron it. So we're gonna sort of like encase that felt in there. Not sort of, but we are doing that. We are encasing it in there. Just fold it in there. You're gonna repeat the same process with the other one, of course. Let's do that. Okay, now you can bring this folded edge over onto the other one. And if you can get it all the way to the edge, awesome. If you can't, and it's somewhere in the middle, that's okay. We're gonna sew all this, the straps. And if you get it right on the edge, you can just sew it right on the edge, but then sew the other side too. So that when you turn it around, you got two nice little stitch lines there. And again, I'm just using white thread, but if you wanna match up your threads to your fabric, go right ahead. So obviously after I've done the other strap and I've encased it just like this one, I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew them up and have some nice little lines here uh, on here. I'm also gonna loosen up a little bit of my, my stitch so it's not so tight because when you sew through you know thicker fabrics, it might pinch the fabric in. So what well, we don't wanna do that. We wanna have a nice uh, smooth line on there. So you just loosen up your stitch a little bit to coordinate with the thickness of your fabric, okay. So that's what I'm going to do. Now if you're doing this by hand, do a little blind stitching all the way down and then stitch your bag all the way around. Okay, I'm gonna be back. I'm not gonna stitch the bag yet. I'm just gonna do these two straps and then I'll bring them back so I can show you the next step. All right, so I have finished stitching up my little straps and now I'm just ironing them just to kind of lock in that stitch in there and just so they look really nice. And you know, my stitching is a little crooked here and there, but I'm not gonna worry about it. I think it looks really pretty. Uh, now, let me tell you something. On the back, when I folded it over, mine almost went to the edge. It's about a quarter inch away from, you know, folding. I don't know if you can tell on the camera. Let me see if this one shows up a little bit better. Um, look at that edge right close to there. This one right here. So that edge didn't go all the way to the, you know, the very end. And like I said, if you fold it over and you end up in the middle, well then stitch it right in the middle and you'll have one stitch down the center and then you can put another two and then you'll have three nice little stitches and look really pretty, really nice. It'll look like a, you know, like an actual strap. And you guys, this actually has some nice, you know, sturdiness to that. As, as far as the way that it feels right now, obviously it's not sewn into anything yet, but we will sew it onto something. Okay, so now we're gonna take our other two pieces, which are our front and our back panels. And before I, you know, put these on here, I wanna cut out the same thing for these out of my felt. So, because I've already checked these two and they are the right size to each other, but let's go ahead and finish. What I was attempting to do was try to get a 12 by 14. This is the length, I'm gonna measure it right now. And I do have 14 because obviously I didn't do any sewing, you know, the ends stayed the same, so they're still at 14. Let's turn this over and see what, what I actually got. I actually got 14 inches across, so this is actually going to be a little bit of a wider tote bag than I thought. If you create this and you feel like, oh, you know, it's a little too wide, I wanna make it more narrow, then trim off something somewhere, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and leave it like that, I really like it. So I'm gonna go ahead, since I know it's 14 by 14, I'm gonna cut out two pieces and I gotta make sure I kind of avoid that little corner there because it's cut in like that. So I'm going to just uh, move my fabric over a little bit and put it on the on the 14 here. It would probably be best if I actually cut these individually, but you know what, I'm just gonna be living on the edge here. Let me see, I wanna make sure that I actually have 14 inches of fabric up to right here because it's not looking like it is and it's not so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off that little piece let's trim off that piece it's nice and straight so let me I'll be right back 
Okay, so now I've got my fabric looking a little bit nicer. Let's, let me put it here on the 24. Now I'm saying 24 because I'm mark, I'm measuring from the 10 inch mark over here, okay? So I wanna cut 14 inches like that first. So you cut it however. Um, okay, also my bottom is not straight, so I'm gonna move it over above the line here so I can trim that. First I wanna get the 14 inch length here. And that's it right there. Let's add the 10. Okay. All right, so now that I know that I have a straight edge over here at this end over here, I am going to straighten up my edge over here. So I'm gonna get it as close to the 10 here. And my 10 is over here and then just square it off is basically what I'm doing. So I've got this edge, this edge, and this top edge all nice and squared off. But now I'm gonna measure up 14 inches, which is my 24 over here. And then I can just trim that right off. Okay, and I can use these little scraps for something else, and I cut into it a little bit. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. Now we're going to take these two pieces. I'm going to move one off right now. And I'm going to get my one of my panels here. Put it over on top of here. Now, I could just grab these and then just sew them onto each other. You know, all four pieces. But I really want this, uh, this fabric here, the felt that I'm using, to give this a little bit of a quilted feel, kind of like my straps do. So I think I'm gonna do some, some stitches going up and down, but I'm not gonna go on every one of these because I think that would be too much and I might pinch in my, you know, pucker in my fabric a little too much. Uh, so I think um, I'm either gonna do like a crisscross maybe, or just go across it like that. I think that would be cute. So I'm gonna decide that. Now you can do that if you want. Uh, if you wanna skip that part, you can go ahead and do so. But I'm gonna go ahead and do it. As a matter of fact, maybe I'll do each one a little different. Yeah, let's see, it's like this. Put the other fabric over here. Let's move this out of the way. Get my hot iron. Okay, we'll get this out of the way. Get the other one. Line it up. And of course, I'm gonna pin these down so they don't move on me. The center right there. And then I wanna pin them at the corners. And then I'm gonna take it over to the sewing machine and just do some random stitching. I think what I'm going to do for one of them is I am gonna do like maybe three stitches like one, two, three, I don't know. Because I am gonna fold, part of this is gonna be the bottom part. So I have to consider where I wanna stitch it. But I do like the X part, so let's see. I will be back. This is gonna be up to you how you decide to stitch it. And we'll see what looks prettier. I, I might do each one differently. All right, so I've got my two panels here. Uh, this one I decided to just stitch along here, and this one I made an X. Before I did my stitching, uh, I did consider that these bottom parts are gonna fold in an inch and a half to create my bottom, which I want it to be um, almost three inches. It's gonna be about, you know, two and three quarter inch wide at the bottom uh, once I, you know, do the stitching, because it takes a little bit of that, you know, the seam where I sew it together. So anyway, I decided to do one stitch across there at each bottom first, and then from there I did my little kind of X pattern on this one, and then I just did one, two, three stitches on this one. I don't know if they'll even show up on camera, if the stitches are even showing up. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just bringing it up. Hopefully when I do the, the little video at the end, uh, you will be able to see the stitching a little bit better. Well, I'll be able to see through the, through the camera and I'll see if I can capture that. Okay, so now we've got these two straps and I want the pretty side to, you know, be like that. So this is the part that goes like, so I'm taking the pretty side, bringing it in like that, okay? So these are our pretty sides, and they're gonna go like this, but we're gonna sew them onto the edges, so we wanna flip them over. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure 
the space that you have here and the space you have over here. And of course the sides are going to fold over a little bit so we want to keep in mind about an inch and a half again over on this side and an inch and a half over here and then just move in. So I'm going to move in about, let's see, that's about four inches. Let's see, one, two, three, four right there. And then in the middle, we've got one, two, three, four, five. So five inches separated and about four inches over here. You do want to keep like a bag about this size, either uh, whether it's a 12 or a 14. You want to keep about five inches in the middle of your, where you put your straps, just so that um, when you grab it, they're not so close together. And then you just pinch it up here. And then also, so they're not too close to the edges. So, you know, just more or less, it can be a little bit further out. I'm going to move it just a tiny bit. A little closer if you want. This will give you a nicer, uh, also like a better balance when you're actually carrying your bag. This is going to get folded over about so much. So I think that's pretty good. Okay. So just kind of decide that on, on your own where you want that. Let me move this one out of the way. I'll bring this one over. Again, this is my pretty side. I'm going to just bring the ends like that and then flip it over. Okay. And I want to do the same measurements that I did over here. So I'm just going to bring this one up against it so that I can put this strap right here. I'm going to pin it for now. Okay, so before I actually sew these two bits together, I'm going to go ahead and just sew these straps in there. Give it a couple of, you know, back and forth just to make sure that they're in there well enough. Okay, and then I can remove the pins and then I'll put them, I'll put them together and sew them around the sides, the bottom and the other side. But I'm not going to do the top edge where the handles are. That's going to stay open. So before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and cut my liner. Now I could have cut my liner at the very beginning when I was cutting everything and when I was cutting this. But I wanted to make sure what size this was going to end up being, you know, up and across. And also because when you do the little stitching, if you decide to do a lot more than what I've done, you'll actually shrink up your bag a little bit. So uh, that's what kind of happens when you're trying to like quilt something. It kind of like shrinks up, shrinks up a little bit. So you got to make sure, you know, you got a nice stitch on your sewing machine so it doesn't pinch it all up and do that. But that can happen, especially, you know, like a novice quilter like myself, that'll happen. Okay, so now I want to cut my squares because these are squares out of my lining. And I wanna cut two pieces and I'm gonna treat my lining just like I do my outside. So I'm going to cut it. I'm not gonna put it on the fold, which I could do, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just gonna cut it. I could use my rotary cutters and get a nicer cut than I would with my scissors. But just trying to give you an idea just to cut it. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and do that. And while I'm at it, I'm actually going to straighten up that edge on my on my on my uh, panel here. Got that little little part that was kind of like you know kind of tummying out of, out of it, creating a little belly there. Let me do that to my bottom as well. Get it as nice as I can. And there we go. Just remove any excess here, and I've got a nice pretty bottom there this other side as well doesn't have to be perfect just try to get it as nice as you can this bit off okay and then also to the top edge and we're going to do the same thing this has got the pins here so you want to sew that first uh, but I'm going to go ahead and just do it now with a pin in there um, just trying to move the little pin heads out of the way so that I can lay my Nice straight edge here, nice and straight, <laughs> I guess and flat. Okay, so we're gonna do this. Okay, so now I've got these two panel pieces. So what I'm gonna do with these, and I'm gonna put a little pin up here on the top here, just like that. This is my top, or you could mark it with a little pencil, and then I'm gonna put these at a diagonal because this will tell me that these are my corner edges, my bottom, and then of course my, my sides over here. Okay, so this will tell me uh, to sew it. Oh, well, goodness, I can't get the pin in there. So tell me to sew along here and up on the all the way up here. So I'm going to leave this part open. I'm going to 
I'm going to sew these two together, or actually sew the, the handles on there first, so I can go back and forth, back and forth, uh, so I don't have to do that on the ends, on the outside, I don't have to get like all that uh, back and forth stitching. So once I have that sewn uh, together with the ends, again, I'm going to make sure that, you know, this is not the same as this one, and it's not. And then I'm going to put these two together, and I'm going to sew the sides, the bottom, and the sides, and we'll leave this open, and we'll be back with both of these pieces, so then I can show you how all that gets to put together. Oh, one important note that I did not mention, my goodness, on the bottom part of your lining, you're actually going to leave an opening, okay? Because you need to flip all this right side out, okay? My lining doesn't have like a you know, like a, a pretty side and, you know, the bottom side. So I'm not going to worry about it. But if, if, if it did, then I will, obviously I will put the right sides, you know, facing each other. So if this was the right side of the fabric and this, I would make them facing each other. So you wouldn't see the stitching. Okay, we're going to leave an opening at the bottom. Uh, I would do anywhere, maybe four, five inches. You're going to, you're going to stitch it closed. You just want enough room in there so that you can pull uh, all of this through there. So I would leave a nice big opening at the bottom. We're going to sew it up. We're going to go from here, up, from here, and then up, okay? All right, so I've sewn the uh, outer edges of both my lining and my actual bag. And uh, this is the top part, which I left open. And then at the bottom, I left a little hole there. Okay, so we're going to take that aside, and I'll show you. Uh, I did stitch my handles on here first on the top edge. And then I put them together. And what I did is I, after they were stitched, the handles were stitched, I put my two... Uh, Line, the front and the back uh, linings or patterns or whatever you want to call them the panels together so that then I could sew around the edges and this this way it made it nice and flat so the handles weren't in there you know keeping it you know too fluffy and then I couldn't sew it comfortably I could pin it down and I also made sure that you know when this was if this was left inside it could accidentally like move over to the side and then when I'm stitching this I can't see it because it's on in there all I'm going to feel is maybe some thickness but because this is all thick I could accidentally capture my handle so this is another reason why you sew them on here first and then you just pull them out you know upward and then put your two panels together and sew them okay so then the next step that I did was to create this little corners uh, here on the bottom because I want it to be kind of like boxed at the bottom. So because I made this one and a half inch uh, stitch uh, line, um, you know, on both sides, that's going to be a really nice little guide. So what you're going to do is you're going to reach in, pop open your corner. Here I can see that I didn't capture the felt, but the two fabrics are captured. So that's all that matters. Okay, so we're going to pop it open like that and we're going to flatten it right here. And we're going to make sure that this seam and this seam are matching. So you also want to make sure that everything is out of the way. There we go. So here we can see this little stitch line. So we're going to follow that same stitch line. I'm going to pin it right there. We're going to follow that same little stitch line. You could measure it if you want and uh, that way you can make sure that it's the same as this other side. That's where I stitch it, right on that little line right there. See if you can see that. Okay, so right here, if you can see be on next to the pin, there is a stitch line. I'm gonna stitch right over that so I can make sure that these little little corners are about the same size. Now I'm looking at it right now and I'm a little bit off, so I'm going to mark it right here with a little pin. So I'm gonna actually start right there and then meet the stitch line right on this other side. Exactly. So they're both the same okay so once you've stitched across here this little corner here you can snip it off okay and make sure you leave you know like about a quarter to a half an inch there before you snip it from that line and I'm going to show you let me turn this let me turn this over we're going to pretend that this side is already sewn you're going to see this when I when I'm done with it okay so once we open it up we pop it open we're gonna have this cute little little corner on our bag, okay? So we have this nice little bottom to our bags, just right there. See? Isn't that cute? Okay, so because we did it to that, we also want to do it to the bottom corner of our lining. So I'm gonna pop it open. And this one, I don't have that little line to guide me. You know, I don't have a stitch line. So all you gotta do is 
put it up against the corner of your other piece and I'm going to turn this back around again so that then you can compare to that. You can measure from here to the end here. That stitch line is about an inch and a half so you could measure over here from the little peak an inch and a half down so there's the one inch and a half line right there. I'm just gonna kind of mark it like that really quick okay of course you want to do a straight line so then you would probably want to use a fabric marker or a pencil and then just mark your line let me just do one real quick here with just a regular pen I'm not even gonna worry okay let's move this out of the way our little pin and then just do a little a little mark like that and that'll tell you where to sew and then you do the same thing on the other bottom corner as well so you want to do that Get your hand in there, pop it open like that. This stitch line is matching this stitch line. So again, I can actually use my, my grid here to measure about an inch and a half, which is right about, oh, let's not move this, down right there. From here to here, this is an inch and a half. So then I can just mark my line and then I can just pin it. I'm going to go sew this up and then I'm going to trim that just like I'm going to sew this one up and trim it and it'll be exactly like that of this other nice little corner and then we'll be back to put these two pieces together so we can go ahead and complete our bag. All right so I have done the bottoms of my uh, bags here the little corners they look really nice here we go that's the bottom part of my bag and actually where I had made that little stitch line that's going to be perfect because that's where it's actually going to fold like that. Okay, that's the bottom. I don't have to do that to the lining, of course. But I think adding this felt here gives it a nice, uh, gives it a nice body to my bag. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and take this piece and we're going to turn this inside out. So, or the outside in or out, or I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> we're going to turn it right side out. That's the perfect wording. There we go. Look how nice this looks. Okay, so now we're gonna bring our little handles down and I'm gonna actually pin them so they don't move on me. And I'm gonna pin this here so it doesn't wanna move anywhere else. We're not stitching anything on the sides, but I just don't want my handles to move around. Okay, so I'm gonna do the other one as well. You don't even have to put that many pins, maybe just a couple like that, just to keep it from flopping back out or just, you don't want it to like fold up a little bit and get caught like that. Just sew them down. So once you have this turned inside out, you don't have to worry about the corners right now. Uh, if you want to pop them out, do so. This is probably the, the best time to do it actually. So just pop out those little corners. Look how pretty that looks, the little corners. I love that. Okay, and then of course it gives me a nice little side as well here. You know, okay. So now we're going to take this and we're going to leave this one with the, uh, the seam side out. Okay, we're going to take our bag and we're going to put it inside of our lining right here. So we're going to pretend right, these, the right sides of my lining were sewn together, so they're on the inside. So this uh, will match up with this here. So I'm just going to pin it right now just to hold it there in place. But what I actually want to do is I want to take the side seam here with the side seam of my bag. I want to pin those together. Okay, and then I'm going to have to go over to the other side and pin that with that seam, like that. Okay, and here's where sometimes things don't always match up, but we're going to make it, we're going to force it. Okay, so where these straps are, I am going to pin right there. And then we're going to pin, we're going to stretch this and pin it just to make sure that it is all together. And then we're going to do it to the other side as well. Bring this up and match it to the edge. Don't worry about all this in the inside here. What you want is these ends to match up. So the part where the strap is, pin it now. Okay. Let's say for some reason your lining ends up a little bit tighter 
than your inside. So it's not matching up, you know, you're like, oh my goodness, there's a lot of excess. What you do is you unsew from the edges here, just the, like about, you know, a couple of inches down. And what you do is you start where, where you left off, do a little back stitch, and then sew it back up and just go out a little bit, okay? So that's actually what I'm going to do to mine. I'm going to loosen it up a little bit because I find myself right here. It's a little tight and it doesn't meet up with it. So this other side matches up just fine. So I'm going to leave that pinned. But I'm going to unsew right here so that I can bring this further out, make a make a wider opening. If I give it, you know, about a little bit of a an eighth of an inch on each side, I think it'll be perfect. And then I can line them up together. Now, if my lining was too big, if it was the opposite way, my lining was too big, I don't have to do any unsewing and sewing back up. All I would have to do is maybe make some little little darts, some little pinch here and there, and you know, just pin it so that then it would match up to the size, okay? But in this case, it's a little small, it's a little tight. I need a little bit more room here because look, this this part right here, if I if I put it together, look, this ends up pinching. And I do not want to pinch my uh, outer layer, my outer uh, panels, because that's the, the, the nice side of my bag. I don't mind doing it to this, but like I said, I'm going to unsew it and then sew it back a little bit further out and then just meet up the uh, where I left off this other seam. I'm not going to open it up over here. I'm just going to worry about the top part. Okay, I'm going to do that. And once I've done that and then I've got it uh, matching up, then I'm going to go ahead and sew all the way around the edge here, the top edge. And I'm going to sew, make sure I do a quarter inch, maybe a little bit more uh, of a stitch, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. Once that's all done, I shall be back. All right, so I actually I only had to uh, loosen up one uh, edge of my uh, seams here on the side. I only had to do one side just to loosen it up a little bit and then it all fit all the way around nicely. Um, I'm going to cut off these little threads. They're all going to get hidden. They don't really matter, but I just happen to be a little stickler for them. i remove them. If you want to trim any bits like where you adjusted your straps, you know, trim that off. They're not sticking out too far out. Any fabric you feel is maybe a little sticking out. Just trim it if you want to clean it up. Otherwise, it is fine just the way it is. This is all going to get hidden inside of the bag. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and take uh, our bag and we're going to turn it inside out. So we actually have the pretty side of the bag. And we said, well, where is the pretty side of the bag? Well, we got to come to the bottom hole down here and that's where we're going to pull it through. So I'm going to open up these little corners here. And actually right here, I double stitched it here and I double stitched it there just to make sure that it wouldn't like pull apart. So I'm going to start pulling that through there. And while I'm at it, since I'm turning over these little corners of my lining, I'm gonna go ahead and poke out them little corners that I created. Just poke them out like so. And then I can finish pulling this out. We're going to birth a bag. Here we go. Watch out for those pins, by the way, <laughs> that you put inside. So this is gonna be like that. These little pins that you put in here to hold your little handles down. We're gonna remove those, turn it over. There we go. So now we have this. Okay. So then we can, oh, by the way, before you even do the next step, you're going to take this over to your sewing machine and you can, well, you can either hand stitch this opening, hand stitch it close. You want to make sure you do that because you don't want to drop some coins in there and then they'll fall through there and they'll be in the inside of your, you know, between the two fabrics. So what you want to do is uh, I'm going to just take it and just pinch right here make sure those little edges are folded in and then I'm just gonna stitch a little do a little stitch with my sewing machine right along there and close that but for the sake of uh, the uh, just, just well, sorry <laughs> the uh, instructions here I'm gonna pretend that is already sewn so it's either sewn by hand or sewn with your sewing machine and then you're just gonna pop this open push that in push your push your lining inward into your bag Reach in there and pull it. Now, you want to take these little edges and you want to make sure that you pull this lining in there so that you don't have it sticking out and you have a nice clean edge. So this is where you can also do some pinning and you might want to iron this and make sure all this is nice, that you have your lining pulled all the way in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little top stitch right here 
all along the edge of my bag to make sure that I don't have, you know, this, like, let's see, like this, see how the lining pops out? I don't want that. I want to make sure that the lining is way in there, pushed in. So here's where I'm pinning right here. And then I can sew here to make sure that that doesn't pop out. So I'm going to do that after I've sewn my little opening, you know, this little opening in there that I have on the lining. Push it back in, align it again. You can get your iron and iron it up. And if you're happy with it like that, great. If not, do that little top stitch. And I think the little top stitch works really nice because you end up with a really, really, really well-made top edge on your bag. Okay? So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'll be back once that's all done. But you can see how the bag is looking right now. And look at the cute two different little handles. Oh, that looks fantastic. Okay, I'll be back. All right. So I wanted to show you that I stitched the... Uh, inside the little hole so that is now sealed I can push it back into my bag and then I've stitched the top part here gave it a little top stitch there it's really nice I really like putting the felt between the two fabrics because it gives it a nice uh, a little bit of a sturdiness to the bag but it also uh, gives it body and it gives it a little bit of a quilted look. I really like this little uh, idea of using little scraps of fabric. I mean, you could do little squares of fabric and do that instead of little stripes. There we go. That is the bag all finished. All right, everyone, I have uh, completed my little uh, scrap fabric tote bag and I gave it a quilted look to it. I think it looks really cute. There we go, the finished product all the way around the bottom and what would it look like inside. I actually put some fabric in there just to give it a some, you know, look of uh, how it would look if it had items in there. Well, I mean, it does have something in there. And then just lay it down and you can see that it stands just fine on its own because we did this little bottom part, but mainly because we added that felt in there. Now, if you don't have any felt to put in there, you could make it without it. It'll just be a looser tote bag and you can use it for whatever needs you might have. Um, also, um, <clears throat> if you don't, like I said, if you don't have felt, you could use uh, like Pellon, you could use an interfacing, you could use uh, even a quilters batting. Get the lightweight, the thinnest one you can if you have that in your home. And if not, maybe you have some other scraps of fabric that aren't very attractive and maybe have some sub substance to them. A thicker piece of uh, maybe like a canvas and maybe you decide that, well, I want this look on my canvas bag. And you could actually do the canvas as your lining and then do your cute little scraps on the outside and the canvas itself would give it some body. All right, everyone, I'm going to give myself a big old thumbs up and I hope that you two will give me a big old thumbs up for this basically stay at home project and I hope you all are keeping safe and that you're finding things to do. All right, everyone, thank you for subscribing. If you haven't already done so, please hit that little red subscription button. And then after, hit the notification bell so you get notified of my videos, which is twice a week. And once in a while, I do a weekend vlog. Also, please leave a nice comment down below. Let me know what you think. Are you going to be making this? Uh, you have any other ideas for it? Go ahead and share them with us. We all appreciate all the helpful hints and all of your sharing. I do have my Facebook page, Trisha's Creations, which you can follow. And if you want to share a picture of what you've created or just a basic other, any other idea, or if you want to ask uh, for help for something, you have a question or maybe even a recipe, you can go ahead and post it on that page. Uh, and that is it, everyone. Please share on your social medias. And as always, enjoy.